Okay. Assalamu alaikum and good evening everyone. Today we are going to start May June 2023 paper 41. Let's start with question number one. Group two nitrates decomposes when heated. Describe how the thermal stability of group two nitrates changes with the increasing proton number. Okay. So if you recall the stability, it increases down the group. As we move down the group two, the proton number is increasing, right? So uh, we will first state that what is the change. So the thermal stability of group two nitrates increases down the group it is because the size of cations increases which results in and as we know that the size increases which due to which the ion polarization becomes less which results in less polarization of carbonate ion Sorry, it's a nitrate ion, side, right? So less polarization of nitrate ion. Hence, nitrogen oxygen bonds get nitrogen oxygen bond gets stronger. Is this understandable to all of you? So these are reasons are mentioned in the notes. So you have to understand how to write them. Now, next part. Copper 2 nitrate decomposes in a similar manner as group 2 nitrate. Write an equation for the decomposition of copper 2 nitrate. So if you recall the general equation for the decomposition of group 2 nitrate, so it's like this. When a metal nitrate is heated, it turns into form. It's a solid. It will form solid metal oxide. Nitrogen oxide gas, sorry, two moles of nitrogen oxide gas and half mole of oxygen gas. So instead of M, we displace M with the copper Cu. So NO, Cu, NO3 twice on heating form copper oxide, two moles of nitrogen dioxide and half mole of oxygen. Is this understandable to all of you? Okay. Now C part. Copper nitrate is added to a water to form solution A. Okay. So solution A must be CuNO3. Okay. So the thing is that a copper is a transition metal ion. So it would form this hexa aqua copper ion with a 2 plus charge and nitrate ions in the aqueous solution. Okay, so when we react it with the ammonia, precipitate we would form. So if the precipitates are formed, so it, it is CuOH twice. Two of the water molecules are displaced. And by hydroxide ion initially. And when it's a excess copper, ammonia, so all four water molecules or are displaced by the ammonia molecule. So then turns uh, act as a ligand, but 
when the precipitates were there. So it means no ammonia would be there as a ligand. Only hydroxide ions are the ligands and two hydroxide displaces two of the water molecule. Now see excess aqueous ammonia. So with excess aqueous ammonia, we got this products CuNH3-4 and two moles of water and with a plus two charge because both are neutral. So that's why we get a plus two charge over there. When the co copper, okay, when it is reacted with concentrated hydrochloric acid, so chloride ion act as a ligand, and as a result, we will get CuCl4. Four chloride ion displaces all the things forming this ion. Is this understandable to all of you? Okay. Now, if you want to recall the colors, so these are pale blue precipitates. And here we get a dark blue. And here we get a. So these are the colors. And it is also a blue or pale blue solution is over here. Is this clear to all of you? Okay, now. Complete table 1.1 to show the formula and the color of each of the copper containing species present in A, B, C, M, D. Okay. So, if you see, as we have already identified A, B, and C, and D, so A is a hexa aqua copper 2 ion. This one. And the color is pale blue. Or you can write blue as well. B is a precipitate which is this complex where two hydroxide ions are the ligand and four water molecules are the ligand. And the precipitates are also over here pale blue. Then if you see C is a complex ion with four ammonia molecules as a ligand and two water molecules as a ligand with a two positive charge and it's a dark blue. And then we have a D which is CuCl4 two negative and it's yellow. Yes, is this understandable to all of you? If any one of you has any query, please ask. Okay, now D, EDTA4 negative is a polydentate ligand. Explain what is meant by polydentate. Poly means multiple, more than two, right? Otherwise it's di, if it's more than two, then it's poly. So the, the ligand is the one which share its lone pair to form a bond. So we can write it is a species. which donates more than two pair of electrons to form dative bond with transition metal line. Is this understandable? Okay. Now part two. Group two metal lines can form complexes similar to those of transition elements. Okay. It's a blue color, Ahmed, because copper, when copper aqueous ions are there, it will form a blue color solution. A solution of EDTA4 negative is added to a water containing CaH2O6 2 positive to form a new complex CaEDTA2 negative as shown. Okay, then you got the equation, the equilibrium equation. Circle on the structure of EDTA4 in figure 1.2, the six atoms that form bonds with the 
metal ion. So remember, those six atoms must have a lone pair of electron. So you know, nitrogen has a one lone pair of electron when it's in the compound, and it has a three bonds. And oxygen has a two bonds, and it forms, and it has a two lone pair of electron. So we have to circle on those structures. So if you see this nitrogen, this nitrogen, two, this oxygen, this oxygen, this oxygen, and this oxygen. So if you guys go through the notes, I have mentioned and drawn this structure in the notes as well. Let me show you. It is. Just give me a minute, please. Okay, so if you see, and here I have shown the lone pairs on the atoms which will form the dative bond to form a transition metal line. Okay, now next part. Three, the calcium ions in CaH2O6 2 CAH2O6 positive and CaEDTA2 negative have a coordination number of six. What is meant by the coordination number? So the coordination number, it number of coordinate covalent bonds, number of dative bonds formed by the metal line. Is this clear? So the number of bonds that are surrounded uh, or that are around the metal line or the form, the bonds, the data bonds which are formed by the metal line are the, is the coordination number. Okay. Now part four, the complex CAEDTA2 negative can be used to remove toxic metals from the body. Okay. The table 1.2 shows the numerical value of the stability constant K step for the some metal ions with ETTA. Okay. So if you see, this one has the greatest value. So it means it's the most stable complex. And if you see, this one has the smallest value as exponent 10 and it's exponent 25. So it is least stable EDTA complex among these. Is this point is clear? Okay. Now, an aqueous solution of calcium EDTA is added to a solution containing an equal concentration of chromium and iron 3 positive and lead 2 positive. The resulting mixture is left to reach the state of equilibrium. State the type of reaction when CAEDTA reacts with chromium, iron and P lead. Okay, now the thing is, if you see, uh, as this complex is has a smaller value, so it's least stable, so when we are going to add in the other ones with the chromium, iron and lead as they have a greater value. So EDTA that these metals displaces the calcium and forms a complex with the EDTA. So the ligand is actually displaced, which means that uh, It's a ligand displacement reaction. Is this understandable to all of you? Okay. Now, deduce the relative concentrations of 
सी आर ई डी टी ए एफ ई डी टी एंड लेड ई डी टी प्रेजेंट इन द रिजल्टिंग मिक्सचर सो सी द वन विद द आयरन इज द मोस्ट स्टेबल सो इट मीन्स दिस कॉम्प्लेक्स हैज द हाइएस्ट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन एज इट्स अमाउंट इज फॉर्म इन द लार्जेस्ट क्वान्टिटी एज दिस कॉम्प्लेक्स इज स्टेबल Yes, it depends on the value. the The value is actually helping me to identify which complex is the most stable. The one having the highest K step value is the most stable one. Now, if you compare the rest of the two, it is exponent twenty three and it's exponent eighteen. So it means that chromium complex of chromium with EDTA has a greater concentration as compared to the lead complex, but lower than. iron complex because its value is smaller than iron but greater than lead complex is this understandable and lead has the lowest concentration of its complex among these three as its concentration as its k step value is less yes azan did you understand or not okay now we have to explain it so we can write that the k step value of okay i'm doing a mistake it would be like this it's a complex right so iron edta complex is highest and lead edta it's not two minus it's minus one is lowest is lower than rest of the two is this clear to all of you yes if any one of you has any confusion please ask now e part The number of moles of water of crystallization in a hydrated ionic salt can be determined by titration using aqueous EDTA for negative ion with a suitable indicator. Okay. Now, zero point two five five gram of hydrated chromium three sulfate. is dissolved in water okay so we don't know the how many moles of water of crystallization are there and we have to figure them out and made up to 100 cm cube in a volumetric flask okay 25 cm cube of this solution requires 26.2 cm cube of 0.00800 mole per dm cube aqueous edta for negative ions to reach the end point now if you see the scheme what they did they have a 0.255 grams of cr2so4 dot nh2o right so 0.255 grams cr2so4 chromium sulfate hydrated chromium sulfate and what we did we dissolve it in a 100 cm cube solution and from that 100 cm cube we take out 25 cm cube solution and from this 25 cm cube solution 26.2 cm cube solution of 0.008 mole per dm 
cube concentration of aqueous EDTA was reacted. Is this understandable to all of you? Now, this will help you to go to the conclusion. Now, what they are saying, use the data to calculate the value of N in the formula of chromium sulfate dot NH2. Okay. Now, let's see how we will calculate it. First, what we are going to do, we are going to find the number of moles of EDTA because we are given with its concentration. Right? And the volume. And we are able to find the moles of chromium as well. Okay. So what we are going to do, first we will find the moles of EDT. Okay, see, the ratio is 1 is to 1, right? So moles of EDTA, sorry, EDTA ligand is equals to its concentration, which is 0 0.008, multiplied by its volume, which is used as to 26.2 centimeter cube, divided by 1000, because we need to convert the volume into decimeter cube. So can anyone tell me the answer, please? <laughs> yes, the moles of EDTA, thank you, Ahmed, is 2.096 exponent minus 4. And if we see the mole ratio of both are same, so it means moles of chromium 3 positive is equals to moles of EDTA, which is equals to 2.096 exponent minus 4 moles. But these are the moles in how many volume of chromium solution? It's in this volume because with 26.2 centimeter cube of EDTA, this volume is reacted. So it's in 25 centimeter cube. Is this clear to all of you? Yes. If any one of you has any issue, any problem, please ask. Now, so we got to know, and this 25 centimeter cube is taken out from the 100 centimeter cube solution to so the 25 centimeter cube solution contains 2.0 Zero nine six exponent minus four moles. So if the solution has hundred centimeter cube volume, then what are the moles? So please calculate these moles. So it is going to be two point zero nine six exponent minus four multiply by hundred divided by twenty five. Both are going to be same because see. As the whole molecule, in the whole molecule, there is a one chromium mahvin. The mole ratio is one is to one. So whether I take the ratio of a whole molecule with EDTA or just chromium three positive ion with EDTA, both are going to be the same thing. Okay, can anyone calculate it and tell me the answer, please? So we got the moles of chromium are 8.384 exponent minus 4 moles of chromium 3 positive in 100 centimeter cube. Is this clear to all of you? 
if any one of you has any confusion till the working guide done, I am done. Please ask. Okay. Yes, it's clear to all of you. Now, if you see this, it's chromium three positive ion. And initially we have this chromium sulfate, hydrated chromium sulfate. So if you see this hydrated chromium sulfate has how many moles of chromium in it? Right? Two moles. So it means that if one mole of this is dissolved, two moles of chromium ion would be formed. Is this clear? So if in this, in the 100 centimeter cube, these are the moles of chromium. So then how many moles of chromium sulfate would be dissolved? It would be X. So if I calculate the X over here, it is going to be 8.384 exponent minus four divided by two. So can anyone divide by two and tell me the answer? Just, yeah, good, as if. So it is going to be 4.192 exponent minus four moles. And these are the moles of Cr2SO3, sorry, sulfate dot NH2O. Till here, is this clear to all of you? See the formula. This is the formula of hydrated copper sulfate. And in this, how many moles of chromium are there? Two. So it means when it gets dissolved, we are going to get two moles of chromium sulfate. When this one mole of this is going to be dissolved, it is going to produce twice of chromium, isn't it? Okay. Now, these are the moles. But if you recall, we, divide, we dissolved this much mass of chromium sulfate. So we know the mass of hydrated chromium sulfate. We know the moles of hydrated chromium sulfate. Now we are able to calculate its MR. So the formula of MR is MR is equals to number of moles. No, sorry. Mass divided by MR. Sorry. Mass divided by moles. So mass is 0 0.255 grams and moles are 4.192 exponent minus 4. Is this a step is clear? Yes. Can anyone calculate it and tell me the answer, please? Okay. So we got the MR of compound. The MR of a compound is 608.3. Okay. So now we got to know this that Cr2SO4 thrice dot NH2O has a MR of 608.3. Is this clear to all of you? Okay. Now just have a look at the periodic table and then calculate the mass of Cr2O7 to negative. Chromium is 52, sulfur is 32.1, oxygen is 16. So it's Cr2 SO4 thrice. So it is 52 times two plus 32.1 times 3 plus 4 3 is 12. There are 12 oxygen. So 16 times 12. Can anyone add them and tell me the answer? Yes, we have to subtract the MR values. Then we get the mass of water. So it is 392.3. .3. So C. 392.3 is the mass of this one and the MR of water is 18, right? So 
Am I audible now? Okay. Now can you calculate the value? So the N is 12. Thank you, Ahmed. So is this understandable to all of you, the method? Okay, now F part, the solution of aqueous chromium ions three, and uh, the solution of aqueous iron three positive ions have a different color. Explain why two complexes have a different color. And it's for just two marks. So we have to write two statements. So we know that the energy gap between splitted D orbitals is different, hence different frequency of light is absorbed. Is this clear? Yes, still here is this understandable to all of you? Now, question number two. A. Some transition element complexes can show stereoisomerism. State two types of stereoisomerism shown by the element, transition element complexes. So there are only two stereoisomers. Yes, very good. Uh, Azan, one is cistrans or geometrical and the other one is Optical. So optical isomerism. Either you can write geometrical or you can write cistrons. Okay. Now the complexes. Okay. If you recall, this is in a di poly uh, di bidentate ligand and the simple molecules like ammonia chlorine these are monodentate ligands <laughs> just give me a minute please yes azan previously if you see they are saying that they are showing different colors right so it is because, for example, if there is a chromium three positive ion in a complex, in the other complex, there is a iron three positive ion. So when it is splitted, it is splitted like this, the D orbitals. So they have a this energy gap in between. But for example, if it is splitted, it is splitted like this. So see the energy gap gets different. And as the there is a different energy gap, so they are going to absorb different frequency of light, isn't it? Because the electron which needed to be excited needs a different amount of energy. So they are going to absorb different frequency of light. And hence, when they absorb a different color frequency of light due to which they show different colors. Now, is it clear? Okay. Now, have the same geometry around the metal line. Okay. So if you guys recall, it's a square planner. So it means this one is also going to be square planner. 
Okay, this exists as a two stereoisomers, whereas PTEN2 has only one possible structure, straight the geometry around the metal line. So we have already decided it's a square planar one. Okay. Now, the complex CREN3 2 positive exists as a two stereoisomers. So it's a C three bidentate ligands. In this case, it's a optical isomer. Whereas the complex CR exists as a four stereoisomers. Okay. Complete the three dimensional diagram in figure 2.1 to show the four stereoisomers of this. Okay. So one can be like this. See, they tell you told them use represent okay one minute Maria represent the ligand O C H2 C H2 and H2 by using this. Okay. If you go through the nodes, see here I have discussed if we have these ligands, then the coordination number would be tetrahedral. If we have these ligands, then the geometry would be square planar. Coordination number is four. Okay. But if we have these two, so obviously this one is a weak ligand and this one is a strong ligand. So due to the square ligand, the geometry will be square planar. Or otherwise, if you see, I think I have discussed that specific isomer which the examiner has given you. See, it's this. PT with 2 NH3 and 2 Cl2. So it's C square planar only. It is because two strong ligands and two weak ligands. So there are two strong ligands. That's why it will going to make a square planar, not tetrahedral. Is it clear? Okay. Now, so we have to show it like this. So what if I make the one stereoisomer like this N bonded to an O? And over here, N bonded to O. And then the N bonded to O. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it mirror image. So N and O bonds like this. N and O bonds like this. And N and O bonds like this. Is this understandable? Okay, now the other one would be I have to change one of the position. If you see between these two, what is the angle? Yes, can anyone tell me the angle between these two nitrogen atoms? Yes. Isn't it 90 degree? These two, 90 degree. But between these two, it's 180 degree. How a square planar shape have a 109? Amazing, Azan. A square planar shape have a... Between the bonds, either they have angles of a 90 degree or 180 degree. Is this understandable to all of you? Yes. See, these are on the plane. So there is a 90 degree angle. There is a 90 degree angle between these nitrogens. And between these two nitrogen, it's a 180 degree angle. Is this clear? If any one of you has any query, please ask. Okay. Now what I'm going to do for example, if I put a nitrogen over here, a nitrogen over here, and a nitrogen over here, and then I put a O, O, and O over here. So I'll do the same thing. This nitrogen is bonded to this oxygen. This nitrogen is bonded to this oxygen. This nitrogen is bonded to this oxygen. Now, if you see in this case, 
these two have a 90 degree angle these two have to have a 90 degree angle and these two have a 90 degree angle so all of them are 90 degrees but in this case two of them is a 180 degree and two of them is a 90 degree so that's what these two becomes the different isomers and now i have made this i'm going to make it mirror image Is it clear now? And if you see, they have actually tricked you in this part. If you see, uh, it's it's a kind of a this one. If you see over here, this one is a cis when the same type of atoms are all of them at a 90 degree to each other. In this case, see, it's these two are at 90 degree and these two are at 90 degree and these two are at 90 degree. And if you see over here, the X, these two X are 90 degree, these two X are 90 degree and these two are 180 degree. So as they are bidentate ligands, so due to being bidentate, we are able to make the mirror image of both of them. Is this clear now? Okay. Now, D. The complex this is found by reacting chromium two positive equasines with the conjugate base of two amino ethanol. The synthesis of two amino ethanol is shown in figure 2.2. Okay, there is a one molecule called oxyrane. It is reacting with the ammonia and forming two amino ethanol as a product. So this is the mechanism for the step one of the reaction of oxyrane with the ammonia in figure 2.3. Okay, now if you see, there are two carbons. And if you see over here, again, there are two carbon. It's two amino ethanol. So it means this is a carbon one and this is a carbon two. Let's assume these. So it means this is a carbon one and this is a carbon two. Okay. Include all relevant curly arrows, lone pair of electrons, charges and partial charges. Yes, a dipole between a carbon and oxygen. So we are going to put this oxygen partial negative and this a carbon partial positive. And as this carbon is partial positive, so what happened? This nitrogen is going to attack this carbon, which we will show by a curly arrow. And as this carbon have all four bonds, so at the same moment, the oxygen breaks the bond and take the whole pair of electron from the carbon. Okay. Now, if this will happen, what will be the intermediate? A C with two hydrogens. Bonded to another C with two hydrogens. As this bond is broken, but this side bond, the bond on the right is not broken. So, Oops. So we got the O bonded to this carbon only, but as it take as the it breaks the bond with the other carbon, it takes out its electron as well. So it has a lone pair and a negative charge. And this nitrogen becomes bonded to a carbon and it has a three hydrogen. So that's why it has all three bonds. So it has a it got a positive charge over here. Is this clear to all of you? <laughs> yes if any one of you has any confusion please ask okay now a small amount of byproduct e in figure 2.4 produced during the reaction shown in figure 2.2 okay suggest how the formation of byproduct e can be minimized so see further substitution occur which you want to be repeated mariam what thing you want to be okay 
So for these kind of a reaction, we already discuss when we are using the ammonia, we keep the ammonia in the excess so the our product amine form cannot react back. So to protect the amine, we always use excess ammonia. Ammonia must be in excess. Okay. Now, part three. Compound F C four H nine N O can be formed from the reaction of byproduct E C four H eleven N O two with a concentrated sulfuric acid. Okay. Compound F is a saturated and a basic organic compound. Okay, basic means it has a amine group. And saturated means there is a all single bonds between the carbon atoms. So there's a structure of compound M. F state the type of the reaction undergone E to form F. Okay, where is E? Oh, okay. It's an E. Okay. If you look at the formula of F, F has how many hydrogens? Nine hydrogen and one oxygen. And E has four hydrogen, oh, sorry, 11 hydrogen and two oxygen. So it means when it turns into this, one water molecule is released, isn't it? And if the water molecule is released, so I am going to remove OH from one side and H from one side. And then when the OH is removed, I am going to bond this carbon with this O. So if I start from here, one, two, third is nitrogen, fourth is carbon and fifth is carbon, right? So let's do this. H from here and OH from here. So we are left with the O. After O, we got one carbon, that is this one. Then I got second carbon, that is this one. Then I got NH, which is over here. Then I got next carbon, which is this. Then I got next carbon, which is this. As the OH is removed, so this carbon is going to bond with this O. And as the water is released, so which kind of a reaction it is? It's a condensation reaction. Because in condensation reaction, two, a bond is formed by the release of a water or HCl. Is this clear to all of you? In, in elimination reaction, a pi bond is formed between the two neighboring carbon atoms. That is elimination. When a something is released and yeah, sometimes instead of water, we the HCl is released in condensation, Mahvi. You are right. So we are done with two questions. Now from question three onwards, we will do in our next class. That will be tomorrow. And I will uh, share the timings of the class in the WhatsApp group. So inshallah, see you everyone tomorrow. Take care, Allah Hafiz. Bye.